Welcome to Face the Facts. It's great to have everybody here for an exciting show as we get the opportunity today to talk about the Boston Celtics starting game one of the NBA championship. How about that? I know Phil's ready. He's got his sweatshirt on right there. We welcome Phil Haley, our NorCam program coordinator. Um, and we have Tom, who is uh, wearing his Cubs hat today. I'll just leave it at that. Is there a reason for the Cubs hat? Because I'm not allowed to wear another hat that I would have worn today. What other hat would that have been? Oh, your the favorite Jackie Bradley fan club hat. <laughs> favorite team. Mm. MBJ. So I, I just am still amazed at the turnaround that this Celtics team took when January 1st hit basically here. To talk about this team going to the NBA Finals, there was no way. There was no way. The turnaround that they had from January 1st on is just truly remarkable to see a team come together like a family in a way, have a common goal of getting to this championship finals and, and, and proving people wrong, proving the doubt is wrong. I'll raise my hand. I was one. And now I've been sucked in because I enjoy this team so much. Well, great. No, it's not. Uh, listen, they can still give me a couple fits, but uh, I love it. I always have like heart palpitations because that's how I always have been. So game seven, I'm sure you had one. Oh, <laughs> game seven last a little bit. Actually, you know what? Game seven, it wasn't as much. Towards the end, like, because I knew what they were doing, and it wasn't right, per se, because they took their foot off the, the pedal a bit, or a lot, and it, on both ends of the ball. And, you know, our usual buddy, uh, uh, Marcus Smart, uh, who's now my son's favorite uh, player for uh, a couple of reasons, but, uh, yeah, he took, like, 18 different shots. I actually don't have... Like, maybe two of those shots I don't have trouble with, but, like, I think it took, like, the last five shots. Yeah, and... that was that was becoming quite a problem in the series a bit, that Marcus Smart was leading in final shots made, especially in, in the like second the fourth half quarter. over yeah. Tatum or Brown. The last two games, I think. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that was concerning. But I want to keep this positive because I've heard enough negativity. I mean, there's already some stations that are still blasting the heck out of them and you know, this team's no good and everything. Like, I, I don't want to hear that. I more so want to talk about how amazing it was that they got that win, number one in game for game seven. I mean, they won three games on my games court. On, on the road. And overall, I think they're like I seven and two, two at on home. the road. Or they're like five and two on the road or like they're like either seven. They have a crazy like uh, road record. Um, and then they have the a crazy – after they lose a game, I believe they're 6-0 and oh now. Yeah, they haven't lost back-to-back. So I believe they're 6-0 and oh right now. Yeah. So that that's truly remarkable too. Yeah. This Miami series, I do want to say, and Phil, I'm sure that you would agree, Tom, probably in the same same boat. A lot of people thought the series was going to be a lot easier than it, than, it, than it was. I wasn't from that approach. I actually was nervous about Miami because they've had the Celtics number for years past two years prior. If you remember, you know, Jimmy Butler and the, and the crew there knocked the Celtics out to get to uh, when we were in bubble land. In six games. Yeah. yeah in six games. They've always played the Celtics tough. And I think a lot of it is because it's a very energetic. They have a lot of different roles for a lot of different people on this team. And I personally like this matchup against Golden State more than I did the matchup against Miami. That's just how I'm feeling right now. I think the Celtics match up better against Golden State than they did against Miami. I do. I yeah. I uh, there are degrees of it that I, I'm with you on that, and other and other bits. I'm like, well, <clears throat> Golden State if they're allowed to, they'll, they'll get their shots off. But honestly, uh. Like, yeah, these last two series, you can even say the Brooklyn one, but not as much. But against Milwaukee, seven games. Miami, seven games. All very physical series. This last one, I would say even more physical, uh, possibly, if it's a, any if it's imaginable, because that Brooklyn Milwaukee series was nuts. 
Uh, no, that was four. But I mean, just well, that's uh, what I I was, yeah. uh, it was kind of, it was a physical. They were, yeah. I mean, the playoffs are physical. When everyone's tired, everyone's broken down. Uh, my whole thing right now is like, do I think Golden State are going to be as physical? I mean, Draymond Green can get there, and you have uh, uh, Looney, I believe, is the center uh, who can get pretty physical. But you know what? I don't, I don't see that. Where I mean, I guess Draymond is their PJ Tucker, but is is Draymond going to be on Tatum the whole time? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't but I'm sure they'll they'll double and give him sorts of fits. But yeah, I kind of parts of me think this is a better matchup because. Uh, I think Golden State is kind of a finesse team. Uh, I, I think they're great, but I also think they're not as uh, bullish as the Heat. And I, I, I'm with you. I thought this. La- I thought people were giving uh, the Heat a small margin, regardless if you think like the talent level is isn't there or uh, equates to Boston's talent. But yeah, they they don't quit and they'll uh, they'll try to run you off the court, just like pure uh, like effort. Yeah, one of the things from Miami that, I mean, I think we caught a major break with was Tyler Hero being hurt. I mean, that was a big loss for them. And I think if there was a healthy Tyler Hero more so in this series, it would have been a different outcome. I also thought it was funny how Eric Spolster just used certain players more so than others with, you know, like Duncan Robinson hardly really even played. And I, I think that he had a lot more to offer than, say, a Victor Oladipo or a flop Kyle Lowry. You know, I, I think you should have given it more so to players that were a little bit more hungry. Uh, yeah, I think Robinson, I don't know, I think Oladipo gave you a lot in that series. And he was a problem for the Celtics. I, I, don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, I mean, he was, listen, he could, he, like that game, um, game three, he, he helped, I would say, single hand, not single handedly, but he was a major factor in that win. Mm. Uh, even, I mean, in, those comeback win, those comeback attempts by the seeds were there. Like game three, they should have had. Yep. Game five, they definitely, sh- or game six, they definitely should have won. Yep. But, uh, and they gave away games in the Milwaukee series too. Uh, like you could say three and, and five for Milwaukee was very similar. Yep. But, I, I guess like Duncan Robinson was a guy who was on the outs for a while. He hadn't been playing really a lot. He had been on, been on the outs and he's a very expensive bench warmer right there, but he wasn't hitting. He hit a couple of shots. He didn't really hit. And you could say like, well, they didn't give him a shot to like be there, but he wasn't hitting it. Like, but then Struess was hitting it every now and again. There was, it was a weird, they're a weird bunch. There was of no guys. consistency with, you know, Miami. And you can even say the same with the Celtics. I mean, you had, I don't think Jason Tatum should have been the Larry Bird trophy winner. I don't think he was the true, you know, MVP of the series per se. I actually thought overall player wise, it was Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler outplayed Jason Tatum in this series. 1000%. I think you could definitely say that. I think Jason Tatum took some time off and also didn't fully extend himself in a lot of ways. And part of that you could say is he didn't need to. Uh, Jimmy Butler had to kind of shoulder a lot of this, even when Bam out of bio. The, the, the Miami yeah. runs through Jimmy Butler. I was shocked about what he was producing and doing yeah. and why the Celtics didn't have an answer for it. Um, yeah, a I couple also think during too, the series, but, you know. I also think, too, uh, you know, I think the refs had something to do with some of these games as well. The, the, especially oh, game teams. six. I thought game six was the, it was it was awful. The officiating, I thought, was oh, eh. looking for that game seven. I think that starting hey. from the top, they wanted a game seven, mm-hmm. and I think they would call in as much ticky-tack kind of things as possible. It's weird because they both get their share. Like it, You could make an argument during the, the first part of the or first half of the series that the seeds were really uh, getting a, lot, a benefit of the doubt. I mean, they were going to a lot, like look at the numbers, but I would say the numbers of free throws – but you know what? They also went to the line a lot more. They also did a lot of, but they also made a lot of attempts and were more, more aggressive like that. The other thing with the line that you were talking about too was that for game six, Tate, uh, Jason Brown, uh, Jason Brown, Jalen Brown missing those two shots right oh, there. That pretty course, much yes. wrapped up the game. You know, if well, he made those two shots, yeah. I think we have a different outcome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think you still had a, a you saw that a energy chance. go out of the room. You saw you everything did. just you could you like could definitely feel that in that moment, like oh, uh, like it definitely was because of where they were. They were up by three. 
Uh, Lowry hits that, you know, crazy through and not, well, I mean, hits that great shot, yeah. ties it up. And then Jalen goes down. I think that's the next play and he gets fouled and yeah. misses those two. And they had hit every one of their free throws in that game up until that point. And yes, then they, they kind of whizzed it down their leg after that too. I mean, that was like, they had other opportunities. I mean, that was, I think you're right. I think it took the air out of that. The air was out of the sail right there for that moment. And they just couldn't get out of that. For so if I'm, I'm Adoka, what I would make sure I do before going into this series is talk about how to close out a game effectively. Because I think that's one thing that we've seen in this past series was a major struggle. You know, you got a lead of some capacity. You need to put your, you need to put your opponent away. So I, I am hopeful that there's some sort of change or maybe some sort of, you know, defensive strategy that's put into play to not seize the moment and finish. I think that's going to be one of the main drivers here of if the Celtics are going to actually win this championship. Yeah. I mean, I think they need, the Celtics need to learn how to hold on and keep pushing. I mean, it's that old, like, you know, was it Isaiah Thomas talked about how the Celtics had taught him and the Pistons to play all, you know, like 48 minutes. Mm -hmm. And as we all know, uh, Bird steals the ball from uh, that famous uh, playoff play. 87, yeah, Eastern Conference uh, series. Uh, Look it up, kids, if you don't know it. Or look it up now if you do know it. You just want to look at it because it's pretty amazing. Uh, playoff a uh, pretty amazing inbound stolen pass uh i say thomas like yeah we had you know we didn't play the all the way through we, you know and i think that's the seeds are gonna have to learn that now hopefully i mean they've had a lot of hardships throughout these well they've been through a lot throughout the, the hardships might not be the right word but they've been through a bit they went well, through they, oh good thompson they, they haven't been able to close out a game strongly the entire season that's been one of the biggest weaknesses all i would all. say the milwaukee game six was like that was them really cl- they did it but yeah, yeah i mean i guess the only real true example that my the, uh, of the game six right i would agree with that well i mean i maybe brooklyn game three and four but i mean that's a whole different bag of bones but uh yeah that wasn't their strongest point i agree with tom on that one and then the other thing i want them to make sure they clean up here is it was a game of turnovers. You know, the games that they have lost was just from stupidity, from whether it was Brown or Tatum, just completely. And I don't mean to bl- blame those two, but those two should know better. You know, the turnovers are just lack of uh, a lack of care sometimes, a lack of just fine detail on where things are, are headed. So the turnover, the turnovers, the Celtics got lucky on, mm-hmm. on some of the outcomes here that, that didn't end up turning into a worse result. Yeah, so. can't forget about Derek White either. I would also I would say Derek White was one of my top three in this series against Miami. The last two games were really great, but go yeah. on, go ahead, Tom. I mean, he was uh, he he had a ton of turnovers in the, that entire series. He can't pass the ball. Oh, I, really? You think so? I I didn't look at him much more so of the turnover thing. I looked at him as more of the guy the James Posey off the bench, the Eddie house from 2008 coming off the bench and delivering. I think that's what the Celtics had missed quite a bit from past years, trying to get to a championship. I also think Peyton Pritchard had a pretty decent series himself too. You know, let's not take away credit where credit's due. Those two guys right there, they had a great hand in this series. Yeah, no, I think uh, Pritchard, had a bunch of great shots and he when he isn't making threes he actually is pretty good at driving to the basket and actually being the scrappy rebounder and or um what you need yeah no you need you need those players to go for those ground ball uh, the go for those uh balls on the ground you need marcus smart to do that you need uh, uh white to do it. and that's a uh james posey is a good uh you know kind of uh player to to match with that i think that's that's kind of who he is you need that bench isn't bad i mean that was Let's they talk. would say they weren't that deep but i don't know they're pretty like eight deep they're doing pretty well uh we'll see where it comes from and i'm interested tom i know you have a lot of hate for Derek white we get uh no he was i will say this tom he wasn't as he underperformed quite a bit until those last two games i think he had some good spots 
in games at times, but I think game six and seven, he really kind of came that game six of uh, the Eastern conference finals was a Derek white game. He had 22 points and he was running around. He was stealing. He was in everyone's pocket. Uh, I, I think he just was, he, he didn't want to lose that game and he kind of he squandered a great performance by him um, in that one. If they w- if the Celtics had pulled off and won game six, it was dip because of Derek White. True. 100%. I think so. Yeah. Face those facts. True fact right there. Um, predictions. Let's go over this now. You know, we did game one starting Thursday night here. Um, we're just a reminder for some of our fans, games one and two, they are in. Uh, for at Golden State, right out there. Then game three and four are at the Garden. Game five is uh, back in Golden State. Game six to Boston. Game seven, if necessary, back to Golden State. Um, let's go to Tom first. Tom, what do you what do you think? What do you think the outcome here is going to be? Um, I don't know. I think it's really going to come down to how healthy Golden State. Or I mean, both teams, really, how healthy they can stay. I think the Celtics have been fortunate enough to be able to uh, get their guys in the game, even though they've been hurting. Now with the the schedule, there's like two days between every game. So uh, it's going to be a tough series. I think they're both evenly matched. Um, Golden State has the experience and the finals experience, but I really – I think it's the Celtics year this year. I think it's going to be Celtics in six or seven. Bill. Uh, well, I mean, this comes from both uh, a hope and a fan perspective, but also what I've been seeing. I mean, I think the Golden State Warriors are, I mean, they're a great shooting team. Uh, they can score a whole bunch of ways. Uh, defensively, I, I think they're pretty good there. They get their hands in the passing lane, and they offensively they're a machine. They know how to cut and move without the ball, and they communicate with each other like a crazy bunch of Raptors. So it's going to be tough. Uh, I think it'll be a good series, and I, I'm actually agree with Tom's assessment. I think it'll be season six or seven because I think the Celtics have been through the ringer in the East, and I'm still convinced the East is a much better conference because yeah. you all the heavy hitters and just Golden State went through some decent teams. I mean they. Uh, Don, uh, Luka Doncic, I, I can never pronounce Doesn't his name Golden correctly. State to you, at least at least when I hear the name Golden State, like that's so last year. Isn't that kind of what the oh, vibe I can uh, get from them now? I Sure. I mean, they uh, they haven't been – this is, I think, in the last – I think it was three years was the last time they made the finals. And that's um, when KD was there. <laughs> KD was there, and he was uh, injured most of the time. That's when Toronto won it. But you know what? I – I'm not going to discount them. I think it's going to be. Good. I, I think it's going to be a good series. I think, but it, you know what? It's, I I've been saying this to friends and other people. I haven't been able to really say it here, but every new game is its own island. And like everyone who says like, oh, stuff carries over. Yeah, I guess. But honestly, like in the playoffs, like just take a look at the track record the Celtics have with every series. Like every game was its own thing. Maybe one game carried over to the next. Maybe, but I mean, just in general, I think all these games are treated like. Uh, one-off playoff games. You know what I mean? Like, they're all do or die. And especially right now... Okay, what? Sorry. No, I was going to say, especially with each game having, like, two days between. Yeah. Coming up, it's going to be basically its own thing. Like, you could say the momentum is going to carry, but, I mean, momentum can only last for so many days. Yeah, and it's, like, every, every day is a new... It's a new day. I mean, I, that's why I think the NBA is kind of different and kind of great. Where just like every new game is, or uh, the uh, Major League Baseball is like that too a lot. We're just like in a series, like it doesn't matter what happened in Game Three. This is what's happening today. So I mean, every day is going to be a every game is going to be a battle, and I think it's the the Celtics are going to find a way to to win it because they've been doing it thus far. But you know what? If they don't play to their strengths, good defense, ball rotation, and finding uh, the be- uh, their their best shot, then it's going to be a long series and they might not make it out, but I think they could do it in six or seven. I agree with Tom. I'm going to go with also six. I feel pretty confident with my prediction on this. I think that the Celtics will get that banner 18. I'm just going to leave it as simple as that. I think they're a hungry focus team with a drive that has a championship mindset. And I don't think anything's going to stop them. 
they've been through adversity a lot this season. They've been down in the dumps. They've figured it out. I love the whole bounce back mentality. Six and O oh, folks in these playoffs, when they lose a game, that is a winning championship atmosphere right there. So that's, that's something that I think shouldn't be discounted with this group. They, they are locked in and I think they have their, their eye on the prize, the eye on the trophy. So. They, they, do, they do have a big hill to climb, though. Uh, the Golden State roster has 125 games of experience, and the Celtics roster has zero. That is true. Oh, in the finals, yeah. But I, I do think the difference here, Tom, the reason I'm saying that I think this is going to be a lot different of a mentality is because I think Tatum and Brown specifically – are fed up with people saying they can't do this. They can't get over the hurdle. You know, the me's of the world, you can't do this. I am now giving them that positivity and spark. So hopefully they listen to this awesome program that we do. Hear how much positivity I am bringing to get them that championship. So now I don't trust it. That glow glow from the trophy. There you go. You get it. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in agreement with that. I think Tatum and Brown are done with the criticism. And I think, I mean, even Horford. I mean, this is Horford's first trip to the finals. and The first time we've mentioned Al Horford's name on the show, and I feel like I'm doing a disservice to him. Yeah, I was supposed to say, I feel like a jerk. I do, he, too. That's the glue. Yeah. That's the glue right there. Al, uh, playoff Al, big game Al. I, listen, I was so happy – he got and it's so iconic because he got that rebound off the Struce miss three at the end of the game, in game seven. He chucked it up in the air, and those are my favorite moments in basketball or like any sort of sport. He's never been yeah. in the situation he is right now, and he's been playing. You know, he's been doing his job and playing the game well. And and speaking doing, of doing, doing their doing job, role. speaking of doing their job, yeah. executive executive of the year, Brad Stevens. I mean, he's lucked into it. <laughs> wait, wait, into wait, it. wait, wait. I don't I'm know sorry. if he's executive of the year, but. <laughs> I'm sorry. What What did you just say? Uh-oh. Can, can we roll the tape back to the beginning of the season where uh, somebody said, I don't even want him in this organization. Get him out of here. <laughs> he stinks. He doesn't deserve to be here. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, well, you know what? You uh, you turn a new leaf, my friend. I don't know what leaf. Tom's talking about. That must have been another host of the program because that yeah, definitely yeah. wasn't. Well, yeah, because you went. It's Halloween. You went as Brad Stevens. That's right. That's right. I did. I remember that. Yep, I did. Hey, everybody. So that's uh, our Celtics outlook right here. Um, one thing I do want to mention quickly here with Tom, specifically on the Bruins. I do not feel very confident with the direction this team is heading right now. So a couple things that are really concerning to me is we still have yet to hear the decision on what Patrice Bergeron is going to do, but the most concerning of them all, maybe it isn't, maybe it's not, is Brad Martian with a double hip surgery will be out for six months. Will not be back till probably Thanksgiving time. With a roster of so much unknown with what's happening with the direction this team is heading, Neely came out and said that they are sticking with Don Sweeney. Let that sink in for a moment. And I don't know. I don't think they know what direction's coming or going right now. Should we be concerned? Yeah, Tom's nodding his head. Yeah, uh, we should be. I mean, it, it really it 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 comes down to what Bergeron's decision is going to be, and he can't. And unfortunately, you know, he can take as much time as he wants to take, unless the Bruins say, "Hey, you need to make this decision now because we need to figure out what we're going to do with the team for the rest of the off season." But I, I don't know what they're waiting for. I don't know if Bergeron has some inkling of whether or not Krejci is going to come back this season or something, that's that's what he's waiting on. Um, well, I do know that Pasta and I think Swayman were over wherever yeah, they were international trying hockey. to get the gang all back together. I think if Krejci comes back, 
I think Bergeron comes back. Oh, absolutely. But absolutely. I think that I think this weighs in more so with Bergeron wanting to go through another season. And if it's the same song and dance, I don't think he's going to be entertaining that. That's just what my gut's telling me right now. I could be wrong. But especially now with Brad Marchand out for the beginning parts of the season, this Bruins team has to have Bergeron back. Has to. There's no rhyme or reason anymore. If they don't wow. have him, they don't have Martian, they don't have Krejci or whatever the heck it is. I think fans are going to be pretty, pretty, pretty upset. Yeah, it's not, it won't be a good season if, if Bergeron doesn't come back or if Krejci doesn't come back. I think a lot of fans are having high hopes that Krejci is going to come back. I also think that um, – I also think that if Krejci comes back, that you, you got put Krejci, Krejci and Pasta want to be together, and I think you put Hall together. Make that the line. Well, and right. Line so one. you would have you would have Bergeron as the first line center, Krejci second line, yeah, Coyle third line, and then you would move Hall down to the fourth line. And I don't think that's a bad move at all. I mean, I don't either, because Hall, Hall had turtled when he got raised up, uh, especially in the playoff run. He disappeared. And the other big disappearance act that must be better next season, Tom is smiling because he knows probably who I'm going to say. The one who just got his two front teeth replaced. Mr. Smith. Yeah, he Mike needs, Smith needs he, to be a lot better than what he produced. No, he needs to be better in the playoffs. He he was produced, he was playing, he was doing very, very well in the regular season. He couldn't produce his playoffs. I thought it was a bag of inconsistency. I did. He showed up when he wanted to. He showed yeah. up when he wanted or, to, whether it was a nagging injury or whatnot. You need more production from him. Because I'll give Holla, I think Holla had a better season than Craig Smith. Fair. That's what I that's what I would say on that. Um the other the other concern too, obviously with our defense and everything going on with stuff too. Uh, Matt Grizzlick is also out, um, bad injury and everything. So he's going to also need some time to rehab and stuff. Um, but I don't want Grizzlick anywhere near my first line D. I don't, I don't third line. That's it. That's all he is. I'm so tired of them thinking that he's something more ever since Tory Krug left. They want to try and see if they can replace that production and it's not going to happen. So you gotta make, you got to make him the seventh D man. I don't, I don't think he even deserves to be on a pairing, honestly. And the other thing I wanted to mention too is Hallelujah Carolina is done. Thank Christ. That's a team that did not belong where they were. But I will say the New York Rangers don't belong in the Eastern Championship Finals either. They don't. Uh, with the way they played last night, I don't know about that. They don't. I, I think I the Bruins would have beat them if that was in the first round. I really do. I think the Bruins had a very, very bad draw the first round. And that's because of this whole structure that's changed in the playoffs. I hate it. I hate the structure. Never should have changed. Well, that's why Montreal didn't belong in the Stanley Cup. Exactly. No, they didn't. They didn't. So the NHL needs to get back to the drawing board and go back to basics because right now it's just, if you win a championship championship or something, I mean, I th- probably, Tampa's probably going to, I know new, the uh, Rangers had a good game and everything last night, but I think Tampa's going to be three-peating. I don't know. What's happening? Think- I think it all depends on who comes out of the Western Conference. I, 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 my money's still going to be on Tampa. It's still I, can tell, I can tell you this much, though. The Rangers are not going to win the Stanley Cup. If they no, make they're not. Finals. Nope. nope. There's that's no, there's that's no I, way. I feel the same way on the same thing, too. I have not mentioned the Red Sox. I do want to talk about them. But the big thing I want to talk about with them is the fact that I want to – share the tweet that and this is not, not bad this is a this is a, a good tweet that i put out my tweet Uh-oh. that i put out the other what night happened? was you don't need to put the sensors on we're, we're good we're good my tweet to the red Sox was i love some people's optimism on this team but can you all come back to planet reality please the 2022 red Sox are not and will not be a playoff team this team is awful they are consistently inconsistent They have no pitching, they have no closer, and way too many hitters who are streaky. Enough with the parade. 
Didn't say anything wrong. You're not you're not wrong. I mean I can be, but it's really nice to be reassured when you think I'm right. So thanks. <laughs> hey, no. did that get did that get you in hot water? No, 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 no. Oh, I just want I just voice a reason, that's all. So you're saying there's a chance. If inconsistency inconsistent is exactly what you mean by giving a chance, then <laughs> yeah. sure. Well, mm. well, it sounds like the Kool Aid. It, it sounds like you said they're being consistent, inconsistent Incon about their inconsistency. Yeah, inconsistent. You're right. Yes. Yeah. Well, isn't that worth something? I mean, if you <laughs> want to go drink the Kool Aid, you know, go right ahead. Go buy your brick. Go, go tell John oh, yeah, buy the brick. town. Go bang on the new Nesson studio and say they were all, all of it. Go, go right ahead. Wait, can we buy bricks still? Is that the thing? Oh, of course you can. The Fenway brick? You can. If you give them a $100 donation, I think they'll throw you a party. I mean, that's pretty cheap. Uh, you know, considering. Especially, considering. With the cost of their, especially with the cost of their new uh, streaming service. Oh, good. Did you hear oh, about right. this, Phil? No, the nesting stream or uh, MLB. dollars a month. You can, you can go watch every single Red Sox, Bruins game, anything you want. $30 a month. Or three hundred thirty dollars a year. Yep. Wait, but like any a, a, any like any game ever. Any any anything that's it's, any it's live Nesson game that's going on. You can go and watch now. Well, what is it? I mean, like you have cable, or like you can use like a cable app or MLB Network. It's exactly. even cheaper. Silly. So yeah. the NFL I buy that needs their head examined. Yeah, I mean, whatever. They're going to try to get their hooks in. Whomever. But yet we can't sign Devers or Bogarts to an extension, but we can go and pay $30 a month for this stupidity well, app. If enough people get the app, we can – come on, guys. Then we can sign Devers oh, and, yeah. and Bogarts. Let's get the app. Nesson 360, here we go. Um, you think they're going to sign one or the other or none? I, I'm leaning towards none at this moment right really? now. Really? Because I just – I, I despise this ownership group. I, but you I, don't I, think they'll retain one of them? Nope. Nope. Wow. And I think J.D. Martinez is going to be out of here, too. All three of them will be gone. Ugh. Well, what do they want to do? <laughs> what do they want to do? They want they want Bloom to turn the Red Sox into the Rays. They want yeah. all these new prospects to come up and be cheap. They want their payroll reduced. Mm -hmm. They don't care about the championships anymore. They want, I mean, to, be, they sure. want to put as many fans in the seats as they can by being – competitive and if they just so happen to win a championship along the line it's gravy hey. that's what my gut is telling me yep that's what my gut is telling me on on the whole rundown of it i think it's i think it's really sad the direction the team is headed because here's a guy like well, i look at Zan, xander bogarts is should be the captain of the team in my eyes he should be he's been there mm. the longest He's consistently produced team player, took a team friendly contract to stay and the team won't even entertain him being there. You know, the Red Sox lead the league with a three, four, five combination or two, three, four, depending on what it is of the best hitters that are on any team. But yet this team is so damn cheap and penny pinching basically because they don't have any pitching that can be consistent to get wins. I mean, what championship team, doesn't go into their season with closer. They have blown 13 games this season because they don't have a closer. Oh, wow. I didn't know it was that much. That is outrageous. Is that, do you, in your mind, do you think that that number is it's accurate? Heel is heel. But do you think Not that number. Not a Craig Kimbrell or yeah. a Kenley Jensen or somebody back there who has the experience to get it done is what this team it, it, it misses so much that one piece is what they would need to get to get them where they need to be and they don't have that there's not one person in that bullpen i have confidence with to close out a game what do you think about uh, whitlock being a starter he got zero strikeouts in six innings phil yesterday no whitlock but he got the win it was like uh was it zero seven strikeouts whitlock should be in the bullpen but is, is he a strikeout is he a strikeout guy yes. or is he a – oh, I thought it was a, a ground ball guy. Yeah, all right. Whitlock should be in that bullpen. The Cincinnati pitcher went three and two-thirds innings with eight strikeouts, and he ended up with the loss. Wow, really? Three and two-thirds innings, eight strikeouts. Yep. Ugh. What does that say about the Bees, man, or the Bosox? 
Well, but people, but people want to pump, you know, pump their tires up. Oh, oh, you know, they just got 14 runs. They're real good. Don't worry. They'll be fine. And then they lose, they lose one to nothing. They can't hit the Cincinnati. The one, yeah. Went two and three against the Orioles. worth your time, one folks. One if the ownership doesn't give it, you know what about the team? Then why should the fan base? Yeah, I, I couldn't believe that either. Two to two out of uh, five against uh, the Orioles. You lose two out of five games to the Baltimore Orioles. No, and you won. Of, they won them, two out of five. I thought one of one of them you blew an eight to two. That's lead. what I mean. I'm sorry. If oh, I, sorry. Yeah, yeah no, it's all right. You only won two out of five with the Orioles, and That's and they blew a six run lead. Yep. <sighs> hey, if you like titanic and like watching disasters implode right before your eyes go buy your ticket i um, guarantee you. you you'll get some sort of an explosion an explosion during the game Gu- guaranteed guaranteed so if that's that's how you roll you do you but i will not be partaking in that cheese fest down at fenway park well if the price goes down but i doubt it will <laughs> no. no not until henry sells no. his three yachts he, only three yeah, you know, it's probably probably the fourth one is with the, he's going to take all the money from the Nesson 360 and get his next one. It's been a slow year. <laughs> Go yacht collecting. Yeah. We'll just leave it at that. All right. Anything else anybody wants to add before we are done for today? No, just enjoy the finals. Enjoy the Stanley Cup finals as they come. And I am actually rooting for the Rangers because I'm a Leach Brian Leach fan from back in the day. He's uh, a Redding guy, I think. Is it really? It was a Redding guy, yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh, no, that was Steve. No, that's someone else. Steve. Yeah. No, I think, oh, Brian Lee, but he was like one of the first Americans to win like an MVP mm-hmm. of the Stanley Cup like in a while, I remember. And that was like 96 or 95, I forget. But it was when I was like 12. Yeah. But I remember really liking that Nessie Leach, Leach team. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I don't know. Uh, and go seeds. And yeah, everyone just uh, be well and uh, stay safe. As with you too, Phil. We will see you all here on another episode of Face to Facts real soon. And have a great one, everybody.